Hey guys, this is Karan and welcome back to my channel. It is such a pleasure creating fresh new videos for you guys. So it always helps if you like my videos and subscribe to my channel. A huge shout out to all my friends and members at Watch Enthusiasts India, India's fastest growing and largest social media platform for watch collectors. Do join in in the link in the description box below for all the fun, informative discussions and updates about our future events. In all my experience as a watch collector, I have seen that when two or more people, experts in their own fields, come together and put their minds to work, and that is when they create something unique. This is exactly what happened when Bruno Bellamich and Carlo Rosillo founded Bell & Ross in 1992. Both being fans of aviation and aircraft, they envisioned the brand as a maker of pilots' timekeeping instruments. For the first decade, Production was exclusively handled by Zinn in Germany, with their offices based in Paris. As you can see from these older watches, the design, design language is prominently featured and the focus was heavily on pilot's watches. As a collector, I know that some of these watches are highly coveted in some circles. While they are a young brand, they are no slouches when it comes to watchmaking records. The Bell & Ross Vintage 1 to 3 was the first jumping hour watch with power reserve. It was introduced in 1992. The Bell & Ross Space One was the first automatic chronograph to be worn in space in 1994. The Bell & Ross Hydromax 11,000 meters was the Guinness world record holder for wrist watch water resistance at 11,000 meters in 1998. After Chanel became a shareholder in 2002, production and offices were shifted to La Chaux de Fonds in Switzerland, where they completely revamped the design language. The focus was still very much on pilot's watches, but the rounded cases of yesteryears were replaced with big square cases that look a lot like the displays on the cockpit control panels. Such panels are called six-packs and may have a variety of instruments like altimeter, barometer, compass, tachometers, etc. The BR03 Diver's Instrument Why reinvent the wheel when you already have a working design in place? A diver's watch needs to be big and bold and functional and Bell & Ross have a winner on their hands with this watch. The steel case measures a solid 42mm per side and while this could be perceived as a very large watch, it sits squarely centered on the wrist. This being steel, we can appreciate beautifully brushed surfaces with polished edges and aesthetically symmetrical polished screws on the four corners of the case. The dial is matte black with a few lines of text noting some of the prominent features of the watch. Keeping function over form, this diver's watch has clean elongated markers at the cardinal positions of 3, 6, 9 and 12, while the other hour markers are circular. All the markers are applied individually on the dial and all are filled with superluminal luminous material. The dial is surrounded by an inclined chapter ring with the minute track. This gives the dial more depth with this addition as compared to the flat matte surfaces in the pilot's watch. The hands are the main draw of this watch. The hour's hand has orange superluminova while the minute's hand and the lollipop style diver's second hand have white superluminova. This creates an excellent luminous display. The hands are brushed and multifaceted, creating a lovely contrast at various angles. Time telling legibility is simply not an issue here and the anti-reflective coated sapphire crystal adds on to that. I would have preferred double coating on the inside of the crystal as well because at certain angles the dial elements reflect back and create a very mild distortion. Nothing that would compromise the functionality at all but as a collector this is my minor nitpick. The dial opening is surrounded by a unidirectional counterclockwise rotating bezel. While the bezel is made of stainless steel with a coin grip, we have a ceramic insert on the top with diverse markings. The bezel rotates with a crisp click and very little back play. On the crown side, we have a threaded screw down crown with crown guards on either side. Both crown guards have text and symbols on them to demarcate the direction of locking and winding. The crown has a contoured rubber sleeve for additional grip and the thickness this rubber guard provides helps in crown manipulation even with gloves on. Turning the watch over, we see a screw down solid steel case back with lines of text on it. Again, I am happy that all this information was not piled onto the dial. 
As with the Pilot's watch, the diver's watch is also powered by a Sarita SW200 Swiss automatic movement. The screw down case back and the threaded screw down crown lend this watch a water resistance rating of 300 meters. Lastly, the watch is complemented by a high functioning natural rubber strap. 24 mm wide at the lugs, flaring out to 33 mm to match the profile of the lugs and finally tapering down to 22 mm at the buckle, this extremely comfortable strap features vented surfaces on the top and bottom for the water to drain off quickly while using it for its intended purpose. Divers instruments by Bell & Ross come with an additional synthetic canvas strap to be worn over wetsuits when the rubber strap falls short. These straps can be swapped by utilizing the included Allen hex keys for these secure hex screws in the lugs. In all, the watch measures 12.5mm in height because of the added rotating bezel. Now this is how the BR03-92 Divers Instrument watch wears on my wrist. I am telling you right now, there is no other Divers watch in the world that looks and feels like this. And this feels great. Nicely centered on the wrist, the flat case and the broad rubber strap leave very little wiggle room. If you are bored of the rounded Divers watches available aplenty, trust me, this is something that will keep you intrigued constantly. This design language has come to be synonymous with the brand and as such, these watches are terrific conversation starters and cannot be mistaken for anything else. For example, the date window is a consistent feature in all current Bell & Ross models and they have assigned it to the unobtrusive 430 position. What's more, they have made sure the date is always displayed the right side up rather than at an angle. And lastly, all date wheels are color matched to the dial. These are the little things that set a brand apart. They could have easily thrown in a mass-produced white date wheel at a weird angle, but they took the time and the effort to do it right. With prime focus on symmetry, homogeneity, legibility, and fine attention to detail, Bell & Ross has been making ultra-utilitarian technical watches for the past 30 years. And I'm very sure that they're gonna do very well in the coming decades. A heartfelt thanks to Bell & Ross and Ethos Watch Boutiques for sending these watches over for review. Bell & Ross watches are available with Ethos Watch Boutiques, India's largest retailer of luxury watches. You can get in touch with me over WhatsApp or Instagram DMs for a deal on these watches or just to talk watches. Thank you for watching.